Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in a new series called 5 useful coaster designs. In this series I will take a certain coaster type and show you 5 different useful designs. Each design can help you out in a different situation. Keep in mind that they are not supposed to be pretty but rather to be efficient in scenario play. The first coaster type we will take a look at is one of the most classic coaster types in the game, the looping coaster. It is available in a large number of scenarios and is one of the easiest to build a decent coaster with. Without any further ado, let's start with the first design. This is the smallest and cheapest possible design that still has decent stats. It costs only 616 euros to build and its size is only 6x2 tiles. It's in launched mode without passing the station and is launched at 53 km per hour. This coaster is absolutely fantastic if you need to add a lot of gas and don't have much space or much money. It makes a lot of money compared to its cost and is absolutely tiny. The downsides are that it has a very limited throughput, has low stats and can't make a lot of money in the long run. This next design is a bit larger and is ideal for when you have a bit more money and space available. It has two full length trains and can make a lot of money. It is still quite cheap at 2871 euros but is not quite as efficient as the previous one. However, in the long run it will make a lot more money since you can charge significantly more and it has a higher throughput. The third coaster is the big one. It has a very long station that can support 5 trains giving it an insane throughput and capacity. It has quite high stats so you can charge a lot for it. This coaster is great if you have a lot of money and space available and need something to drag in the big bucks. Despite it being a big coaster, it's still not that expensive at less than 12,000 euros. This one may seem a bit odd compared to the others, but it has a very specific purpose. There is an option in scenarios called Harder Guest Generation. If that option is enabled, you can get the first 1,000 guests like normal, but after that you need rides with at least 6 excitement and 600 meters of length to get more guests. This coaster achieves exactly that while being quite compact and relatively cheap. It has a length of 603 meters and excitement of exactly 6.00 after the three flower beds. The last design of today also has a very specific use. Its intensity and nausea stats are way too high for guests to ride, but that is also not what this ride is used for. Despite the bad stats, this ride will give more park value than rides with great stats. This is because park value is based on all three stats combined and there is no cap on any of them. That means that this is an incredibly easy way to get lots of park value since the ride is quite small and cheap. The cherry on top is that if you keep a ride in test mode it will not age but still give the park value, meaning that the value of the ride never decreases. If you want to know how much you can charge for each ride there is a great calculator that I have linked in the description. The save file containing the 5 designs is also in the description. If you like this series please let me know in the comments below and also let me know which coaster type you'd like me to do next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.